So the next demonstration is how to turn a foot ring and trim the bottom of your mug. So I have two mugs here, both I made on the wheel. One has a thinner base and one has a thicker base. You can do this with coil built mugs as well. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the one with the thicker base. And what I'm gonna be showing you guys today is how to clean up this bottom area. You can see it's a little messy and bumpy. And I'm also gonna show you how to put a foot ring in. The foot ring is where we leave a nice ring of clay around the edge, and then we remove the center. It has a nice look to it. It also allows you to put glaze on part of the bottom of your mug, and it lessens the weight of your mug. On the second mug, which has a thinner base, I'm simply gonna show you how to keep a flat base, but then just how to trim the excess clay all around the outside here and how to clean it up. All right, so we'll start first with the one with the foot ring. The very first thing I need to do is I need to get this mug centered on the wheel. I, got, I have to get it spinning so that the mug is right in the center. So first I'm gonna kinda eyeball it, making sure my wheel is, uh, the switch is on but the pedal is off. So I really wanna be able to control the speed and I move the mug at a very slow speed. You don't wanna go very fast here because it'll go flying off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm a righty, so my wheel is spinning left and I'm working at three o'clock on my bottom of my mug. If you were a lefty, the wheel would be spinning in the opposite direction and you would be holding the opposite hands, okay? And I'm just gonna lower, keeping my elbows to my body, I'm gonna lower that needle and I'm gonna allow it to make a circle. And I'll show you what that looks like. You see, I have a circle at the bottom of my mug. And what I'm trying to do is get that circle completely in the center. So I noticed that the border is a little bit thinner here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ever so slightly move my mug towards that thin border. And then I'm going to wipe away that circle and try again. Okay, so I'm wiping away that circle. I've shifted the mug. Again, I'm moving very slowly because I don't want my mug to go flying off. And I'm looking and my circle still is a little bit narrow on this border, so I'm going to move it ever so slightly in the direction of where the border's the thinnest. I'm going to wipe away that circle. And now this time, you can see my circle is right in the center of the bottom of the mug. So now I know that I'm centered, okay? In order to keep it there, I'm going to take some soft plastic clay. I'm gonna put my hand over the mug and I'm gonna create three little pinched pieces that lean up against my clay. And what this does is it enables me to spin the wheel a little bit faster and not worry about my mug flying off. So my mug is now centered, okay? I have these pieces of clay here to kind of hold it in place. I have my sponge. I have my pin tool, and I also have a loop tool that looks like this, and this is what I'm gonna to use to trim the excess clay away. So the first thing I wanna do, before even making a foot ring on the bottom, is I wanna trim away this extra clay here. It's this kind of bump, um, and it just doesn't go with the rest of the mug, so I really wanna trim that down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of moisture to the clay, and everything I'm doing is very slow, with not a lot of pressure because I don't wanna push the mug off. I'm gonna hold this tool like so, all right, with the pointy part facing my thumb. And I'm just going to use the sharp edge of this tool right at three o'clock at a slow speed. And you can see it's starting to remove clay. Every once in a while, I'll need to apply a little bit more moisture. If it gets too dry, that could be a problem. You can even take your left hand, much like you did when you were throwing on the wheel, you could take your left hand and use it to stabilize. Notice that my elbows are into my body. I'm not like this. I have my body bent over and I'm just gently trimming. And I'm not only taking away that bump of clay but I'm also kind of rounding out right here along the edge. I want to try to avoid a right angle. I want to make it a little bit rounded. 
that'll decrease the chances of my mug chipping after it's fired and out of the kiln and I'm using it. Notice that I'm taking off just a little bit of clay at a time. Don't try to cut in a lot of clay at once. Again, you'll run the risk of damaging your mug or pushing it off the wheel. So it just takes a little bit of patience. I'm working on that bump there, getting rid of that bump. I do have this tool on a slight angle. So instead of laying it flat, I'm pulling it out, the handle a little bit out. And that gives me a slight angle. I did look at my mug before I started this process to kind of see how thick the base of my mug was so I knew how much clay I had to work with, right? You don't want to do this endlessly because eventually you'll trim so much clay away that you won't even have a mug left. But I am just slowly working on getting rid of that bump and kind of creating a nice curve and evening out the bottom of my mug and then I'll show you guys how to do the foot ring. So notice that I periodically adding water. People also use this tool to add designs to the exterior of their mug. If you get a little piece like that, you could just stop the wheel, pull it off. You can see I still have a little bit of a bump right here. So I'm kind of just slowly working on getting rid of that. Moving the tool kind of up and down. If it feels dry, you'll feel it if it feels dry. You can just add a little bit of water, clean off the tool every once in a while. Slowly but surely, I'm getting rid of that bump and really evening out the walls of my mug. And then the next step is going to be to do a foot ring. So if you cut, you made a mug on the wheel and you cut it off and it was super messy, kind of at the base, you didn't clean it up enough with your angled wood tool and you're just kind of frustrated with how it looks, know that you can do this step and you can really kind of clean up your mug and get it look way more professional just by taking this extra step. Again, some people call it turning a foot ring or trimming. I like to refer to it as trimming. That makes more sense because you're actually trimming away the clay. And notice the whole time I'm staying on that three o'clock line. If you're a lefty, you're going to be at the nine o'clock line. But if you're a righty, you're going to be at the three o'clock line the whole time. I would say I'm almost done getting rid of that bump. You can even stop and take a look every once in a while. You can see how much cleaner it is. I'm gonna maybe go over it one more time. And then I will show you guys how to do a foot ring. Remember, I'm just staying at a slow speed. So now I don't have so much of that bump at the bottom. Okay, so I have a flat bottom here, but I wanna turn a foot ring. Okay, so I wanna leave about a quarter of an inch of a foot ring around the outer edge here. So watch, instead of holding the tool like this, with the point kind of up towards my thumb, I'm now turning my hand so the point is down I'm holding my right wrist and I'm starting in the center of my clay and I'm going to move towards three o'clock outward, but not all the way because I want to leave some of a foot ring there. And I'm just going to trim a little bit of the clay off, leaving that quarter inch edge, quarter inch, maybe a little bit less. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, and you can see I'm starting to create that foot ring, that ring around the edge of the clay that's going to continue holding the mug on the table surface or wherever I'm going to be placing my mug, adding a little bit of water. You don't want to go too far down. Keep in mind, your clay base is probably anywhere between three eighths to a half inch thick. So you don't want to take so much off that you poke a hole through the bottom of your mug. 
you want to take off just enough so that you can put glaze in the center here and the foot ring will be glaze free and will hold your mug onto the surface of the kiln shelf when we fire it. So I stop right as I get to that quarter inch, clean it up with the sponge a little bit. Very satisfying to do this. You gotta start in the center and then come straight out towards three o'clock. You can kind of hold it there to really make a nice clean edge on the foot ring. And I'll show you guys close up again. In just a moment, I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm at a pretty slow speed. I would say slow medium at this point. Okay. And I'm not gonna go down anymore. I feel like I've gone down enough. I've created enough of a foot ring. Let me show you what it looks like. Now I'm just kind of cleaning it up with my sponge. So you can see I have this nice ring around the edge on which my mug will stand. I can now put glaze in here, which I couldn't have before if it was a flat bottom, right? Okay. And now I'm just gonna clean it up. And when you take your mug off the wheel after doing this, you will notice that it's pretty soft. It's, you know, I had added a lot of water. So I would either take this and just kind of leave it out, or I would take it and put it in front of the fan uh, and let it just get leather hard before I flipped it back over and put it away. So I would leave it upside down, put it in front of the fan and let this top area get leather hard. But you can see I have a nice foot ring. I'm gonna move that to the side. Now, <clears throat> the base of this mug is thinner. So I don't wanna put a foot ring in it. I just wanna have a nice clean flat bottom. You can do this same technique, not on the wheel. If you wanna just do it at your table. You can use a banding wheel and simply use the rings on the banding wheel to kind of center your mug and then add a little bit of water, add a little bit of water and then manually trim and clean up the edge just simply by spinning your banding wheel. Okay, so that's kind of an old school way of doing it without interacting with the pottery wheel if you don't want to deal with the pottery wheel right you just visually make sure it's centered and kind of trim it off make a nice rounded edge there get it in there with the sponge you want to do this before you put a handle on all right but i'm going to show you how to do this using the wheel so very similar to what i did before i simply put it in the center visually i turn the wheel three o'clock, I put the pin tool down, I make a circle on it. If it doesn't look centered, which it doesn't, this is where my border is thinnest. I'm gonna move the mug ever so slightly, maybe not even an eighth of an inch, wipe out that circle, and repeat the process. And I keep doing that until I find that the mug is centered. That's why you want to move the mug in very small increments. Okay, now it's centered. I do what I did before. I put my hand over the top. I pinch three pieces of clay to hold it in place. And now I simply take my sponge. And now I can simply clean up the sides a little bit, like right here where it's a little bumpy. But I'm gonna keep my bottom flat so first I'm going to, at three o'clock, just kind of trim some of the excess clay off the sides here where I feel it's a little bit messy. Again, not trying to take off too much too quick, staying at three o'clock. Then I'm gonna angle it in a little bit right at the edge there. I'm trying to make a more rounded edge as opposed to a right angle. When you have a flat bottom on your mug and as it starts to move up towards the walls, if where the two meet it's more of a right angle then you run the risk of the edge of your mug chipping and breaking so if we round out this edge a little bit 
as opposed to a right angle when the mug is finished and out of the kiln and glazed and we're using it functionally, we decrease the chances of it chipping and breaking, right? We make things by hand. We want them to last and be durable. And there's little tip tips and tricks that you can do to ensure that that is the case. So again, I'm just coming up the side of my mug at three o'clock, rounding out the edge. And then I just want to keep a flat bottom. I'm not doing a foot ring, okay? This is how I'm holding the tool. I am simply gonna take that tool right at three o'clock here. I have the point right in the center. And I slowly move straight right to three o'clock. All that does is clean up my bottom. I'm gonna curl around the edge there and it makes my bottom nice and flat. So I'll do it one more time, ensuring I have a nice flat bottom. Right at three o'clock, I curl over the edge. And now I'm just gonna take my sponge and clean it up. And just like the other mug, it's gonna be a little bit plastic at the bottom here. So I don't want to turn it upside down or right side up. I want to leave it upside down, probably put it in front of the fan, but you can see it's a nice, clean, flat bottom. And the edge here where it meets the wall is a little more rounded, less chance of breaking. Okay, so I would put these both in front of the fan, let them dry, get a little leather hard. And once they're leather hard, I can flip them back this way. And then we can work on adding handles, adding any decorative elements, relief, carving and then the next demo after the handle demo i'll show you is how to use the underglaze paints for both painting and paper resist